All right, so let's see how much you understand about square roots. Because if you really do understand square roots and radicals, well, this will be a very easy problem to solve without using a calculator. Okay, so here is the problem. We have three times the square root of 20 plus seven times the square root of five. Of course, this is the numerator in this fraction. And the denominator is the square root of two times the square root of three. So what we're trying to do here is simplify this big fraction without using a calculator. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I want to show you the uh, correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. All right, so one more time, we have a fraction. The numerator is three times the square root of 20 plus seven times the square root of five over the square root of two times the square root of three. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct uh, solution here is 13 times the square root of 30 over six. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. If you're like, I missed you too, math man. I thought I had the right answer. What's going on? Well, you probably made a mistake or two. No big deal. Matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so let's go ahead and focus first on the numerator. So we want to figure out 3 square root of 20 plus 7 square root of 5. We want to go ahead and simplify that. So how do we add uh, square root expressions? Well, I'm going to show you this right now. Okay. All right, so 3 square root of 20 plus 7 square root of 5. The main thing that you want to know is that you want to try to simplify the or, uh, your square roots. So here, the square root of 20 plus the square root of 5, I can't do anything with these two expressions as they are. So if you can, uh, if you're trying to add or subtract square root expressions, let's kind of make something up. If I had three square root of seven plus two square root of seven here, I can add these up. I can add these numbers up right here because these are uh, square roots of seven. So the answer would be five square root of seven. Okay. So it's, this is very much like like terms in algebra, okay? Kind of think of it this way. If I had 3x plus 2x, my answer here is 5x. I think that's a kind of good way to think of it. So when you're adding and subtracting square roots, you can only do so if, in fact, you have the exact same square root, the exact same number, exact same radical. It has to be perfectly 100% the same, okay? And if it is the same, you can basically effectively add or subtract the respective coefficients, the numbers in front of that, okay? But right here, when I'm looking at this problem, uh, three square root of 20 plus seven square root of five, I'm like, oh, okay, I got 20 here, I got five here, so I can't do anything about it. Well, not so quick, not so quick. What we wanna do is simplify our square roots, okay? This is a key skill. So how do you simplify a square root? It's kinda of like reducing a fraction in some sort of way. We can rewrite this in a simpler way, but what we want to be on the lookout is for things called perfect square factors. Okay, so what is a perfect square? Let me go ahead and show you these numbers right now. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Now, what's, you know, what do these numbers have in common? Well, these are perfect square factors. When I take the square root of these numbers, like 4, I get 2. When I take the square root of 9, I get 3. Take the square root of 16, I get 4, you get the idea. So you want to be on the lookout for these numbers, okay? And of course, there's an infinite amount of them. These are perfect squared factors. And you want to be looking at these square roots, and you, you want to be like, hey, does this number underneath this square root have any factors that are perfect squared factors? Because if it does, we can simplify this. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to do that now. All right. So we can write... The square root of 20 has 2 times 10, but that's not going to help me out. Uh, I can think of 20 as 2 times 10, 2 times 10 or 1 times 20, obviously. But if I think of uh, 20 as 4 times 5, I'm like, oh, 4. I'm on the lookout for these perfect square factors. Oh, 4 is a perfect square factor. So this is going to come in nice and handy right here. So we have 3 times the square root of 20, but I'm thinking of 20 as 4 times 5. 
And here is a rule of square roots, okay? The square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. You can pull apart uh, these two um, uh, factors here into their own little nice individual square roots. So instead of writing this as three times the square root of four times five, I can write this as three times the square root of four times the square root of five. And this is going to have tremendous benefit for us here because, because we could take the square root of four. It's going to be two. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So here, obviously seven square root of five, there's nothing there. So we're just going to write that. But this is really important. They understand you have to be on the lookout uh, for these perfect square factors. All right, so we can write this as three square root of four times square root of five. The square root of four is what? It is two. Always just work with the principal square root, which is the positive value of your square root. So we have three times two times the square root of five now. Look at this. I got a square root of five and a square root of five. So this is going to be uh, a nice little opportunity to add these two square roots. So three times two, which is, of course, six. So we have six square root of five plus seven square root of five. This is, uh, we can add these because we have square root of fives. So this is going to be 13 square root of five. Okay, so that might be like a little problem in and of itself. And basically the way I kind of designed this problem is so we can kind of review different uh, concepts. So the first two concepts that we kind of reviewed is one, how to simplify a square root, and two, how to add square roots. So now let's move on to our next phase of our problem. All right, so our numerator, we had to kind of go through a little bit of a cleanup, but we figured out that it was equal to 13 square root of five. So now let's talk about the denominator. Now, before we continue on, I have a quick question for you. Are you enjoying this content? Well, if you are, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well. I will definitely uh, appreciate that. Also, if you need additional help in math, check out my math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I'm gonna give you uh, some specific recommendations at the end of this video. All right, so let's get back to the problem. So here we have uh, square root of two times the square root of three. How do we handle multiplication of square roots? Well, let's go ahead and deal with that right now. Super easy, okay? Just as you have the square root of A times B, is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. Basically, that's the rule of the same. The product, okay, of these factors, you can write as in their own individual square roots. Well, you can also write individual square roots under one big square root, okay? So you kind of think of the rule backwards. So instead of a square root of two times a square root of three, I could just uh, uh, choose to write this as one big square root two times three, which is, of course, is, uh, of course gonna be the square root of six. So here, now, is our final uh, answer, okay? But not so quick. So if some of you got to this point right here, this was your answer, okay, not the answer that I gave, well, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a nice, uh, I'm gonna give you a happy face, okay? Yeah, you know, that check mark, I'll give you a couple check marks. We're not gonna give you an A plus or anything like that, but I would give you a solid B plus. That's pretty good work. However, we have a problem right here, okay? And this is a problem. Now let's go to discuss that problem right now. Okay, so when you're working with square roots and radicals, one thing you cannot have in your final answer is a square root, okay? What we call an irrational number. Something like if you have like a square root of four in your denominator, just go ahead and take the square root of that, and that is two. But here, the square root of six, if you do this in your calculator, you're gonna get some sort of decimal, right? Well, this is not allowed. You cannot have your um, a square root left in the denominator as a final answer. This type of number is what we call an irrational number. Irrational number, it's not rational, right? So some of you are saying, what does that mean? Well, an irrational number is something like the number pi. Okay, pi is an example, very famous uh, example of an irrational number. So pi is approximately equal to 3.14. And hopefully you guys are familiar with pi. Uh, of course, this is the number we use when we're dealing with circles. 3.14, and I'm not quite sure of the other digits. I think it's like 1, 5, da, 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 da. Well, it goes on and on and on and on and on. It goes all the way into infinity. But here's the deal. This number, the digits of pi, do not repeat 
and uh, they don't repeat. In other words, it's not like three, two, three, two, three, two. This is what we call a repeating decimal. This doesn't repeat and it doesn't um, terminate. So I have to go way out here to infinity. I just don't have that kind of time. I don't know about you, but I don't have infinity to figure out what all the digits of pi are. So this is impossible for us to list all these digits. We can write a lot of them out, but not all of them out. So we just go ahead and give this number a nice, lovely uh, symbol like that that represents all these digits. That's what we call an irrational number. Same thing with the square root of 6. If you go into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal, but it's going to go on forever. So conceptually speaking, you can't divide a number by a number that never ends. Okay, It just doesn't make sense. So that's why in uh, mathematics, we don't leave our final answers with an irrational number in the uh, denominator. Okay. So like right here, we have the square root of six. You gotta recognize, oh, irrational number, I have to do something. And you can see what I'm doing is what you need to learn, and that's called rationalizing. Okay, we need to rationalize the denominator. So how do we get rid of this without breaking this actual value? Okay, well, I'm gonna show you this right now. Super easy, not that difficult. What we're gonna do, whatever your square root here is, like here we have the square root of six, we're simply gonna multiply the denominator by this, uh, this same number, the square root of 6, and the numerator by the square root of 6. Because the square root of 6 uh, divided by the square root of 6 is what? Anything divided by itself is 1. So really, we're just taking this number right here and multiplying it by a big old 1. 1 times anything is just itself. So we're not harming the radical. We're not doing anything you know, mean to it. We're just kind of manipulating numbers so we can kind of get rid of this square root in the denominator. Okay. And now we remember, we already know how to multiply square roots. So let's go ahead and clean this up. So uh, the denominator is going to be the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. Remember, I can uh, write that as this square root of 6 times the square root of 6. That's equal to one big square root or 6 times 6, which is equal to the square root of 36, which of course is 6. Okay, so that's what our denominator is. And then we have the square root of 6 times the square root of 5, which, of course, would be the square root of 30 times 13. Now, you can take a quick look at 30 and just think of those perfect squared factors. And you're like, oh, yeah, you're not going to get a 4 or 9 or anything else into a 30. So you're kind of good to go right there. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.